Moritz, what uh, appeals to you about possibly uh, playing some shifts with Simon Atkinson? Pretty good today. I think we uh, had some good chemistry out there. I think every D can play with each other. Um, doesn't matter who's out there. I think we just want to be a solid decor, and I think tonight will be a good challenge for us. I think it was the first time ever, so um, obviously I'm looking forward to uh, <coughs> pretty uh, pretty long and, and big bodies, and I think we can cover a lot of uh, a lot of ice and hopefully uh, make it work. What kind of progress have you seen in his growth? Just um, the, the, you know came up at the end of last season. I think he's just. She just wants to get better every single day, and I think that's the right mindset. Um, yeah, now it's just about um, translating to the ice. I think he's gotten a lot stronger in the gym. I think that's a big part. Um, I think I said before, I think he's slowly like growing in his body. Um, still young, and um, overall, I think yeah, he can be a, he can be a big force for us when uh, when he, uh, he's ready to. Uh, Take those bits minutes, which uh, I think he's he's ready for. So I'm I'm excited for this year. How important is communication when you're kind of with somebody you haven't played a ton with? Um, it's always really important. Doesn't matter who you're playing with, or um, could also be a forward line you're not really playing with. So you just gotta communicate. It makes it a lot easier. Obviously, um, the faster you can uh, make decisions, the harder it is for the uh, opponent to react on it. And Hopefully the cleaner we can break the puck out, and that's uh, our main focus. Does that happen fair when you're paired with somebody you haven't played with before? Does it seem to come fairly quickly, just the familiarity and the tendencies? Do you pick up on each other's fairly soon? Yeah, I mean, you you know what that person is doing in practice. You see him every day, so I think it would be, uh, would be really bad if you can translate that on the ice. So uh, I'm, I think everybody can play with anyone in our locker room, and I think we'll... We'll, we'll make a make a solid appearance uh, tonight. Albert Johansson is another young defenseman looking to make a spot this year. When you were coming up and trying to make your spot and your mark with this team, what were some of the things you focused on? And for him, what's impressed you from his play so far this camp? I mean, he can skate for 60 minutes. I think he just doesn't look any exhausted out there. Like he's um, just a really solid skater. Uh, makes the little passes. Um, tape to tape, um, isn't afraid to gap up early and, and trust the skating. I think that's a big part in, in nowadays game. And yeah, I think he'll uh, have a good shot. I think obviously a little competition is always good for everyone. And um, I mean, we'll see who, who cracks the opening uh, lineup by uh, next week. Back in April, excuse me, back in April, I remember you saying something about wanting to play with Simon or considering the possibility of a pairing between you two. Uh, I'm curious, what kind of, I guess, indicators did you see from Simon back then that made you excited to have that pairing as a possibility? I mean, he's he's one of our top prospects, uh, just trying to break through and become a full-time NHL. And I think there's a reason why he got drafted so high, and there's a reason why he should be uh, on our lineup. And I think he he's done everything uh, you could possibly ask from him right now. And I think he's he's a tall skating defenseman who's not afraid to step up has great offense, um, sees the game very similar to me, I would say, and obviously th those are things that get you excited and you want to play with someone like that. I know fans usually get really excited about prospects coming up and getting older and getting to kind of be in the NHL lineup, but how exciting is it for you guys as players when you see guys like Edmondson, Casper, Danielson really getting to that point where they're joining the roster or getting close to it? I mean, it's great because like um, it wasn't too long ago when you were in that position and you got great help from all the other guys in the locker room. They made it really easy. They made a very smooth transition for you. And yeah, you you felt like you were wanted in that locker room. And obviously that's something you want to give back and you learn and just try to make it as easy as possible for, for anyone who's, who's getting the chance to play with us. And I think the more comfortable the guys are, um, the more they trust in their abilities. And obviously the, the better they'll be out there and, hopefully help us win um, a lot of games. You know, do you feel like you're in that role now? You're kind of like that older guy trying to help these newer, newer guys along? I mean, I think the good thing is we uh, have obviously a couple older guys and um, a lot of younger guys coming up. And um, obviously maybe we can just be like the transitioning group in there, you know, like understanding both both 
both parties maybe and um, just like try to communicate with 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 everybody um, make it easy for them um, try to like I don't know incorporate them in, in the in the whole group and um, obviously it's uh, for them probably a lot easier to talk to us than maybe some of the veteran guys that are have a lot of respect for obviously and if that's something I can do I think then I already did my part other than that I think I just want to bring good mood, um, a great atmosphere, and obviously um, a couple of jokes here and there. Moritz, uh, could you clarify? Some sites have you as six foot three, others six foot four. I don't know if six foot four is with your hair, but what do you put down on your passport? What do you think? Consider yourself to be your height? Oh, I might cheat it in my passport, but um, I don't know. I uh, honestly, I don't. No, uh, I think a six three or six four doesn't really make a big difference. Um, yeah, I uh, hopefully I just don't get shorter, and in, in, in the future, then I think I'll I'll be fine. What'd you put on your passport? Uh, I pr I think probably like six four uh, or six four and a half. Um, just <laughs> it was a good day. Yeah, just just trying to maximize my uh, yeah my opportunities there. <laughs> When you look at this group of players you guys have, like what what excites you going into this season about this collection of guys? Uh, everything. I don't know. I'm just really excited for the season. I think um, we have a lot of expectations. I think obviously um, we brought in guys who can help us win and accept their roles like really good. And I think that's that's probably the biggest difference. I think the roles are pretty um, pretty clear for everybody. Everybody knows who, who needs to step up and try to yeah transition to another gear. And I think we're ready for the challenge. And now, obviously, um, yeah, you want to finally be in the spot where you are hunted and and you're not hunting anymore. And I think that's that's probably the, the greatest challenge that that gets me the most excited for for the for the season. You came as close last year to the playoffs as you have. So like, what did that hunger kind of feel like <coughs> for you to? having experienced that now to, to go into a new season knowing that? Yeah, I mean, that just uh, basically told us that we have to take every game even more serious. Um, doesn't matter if you're going into overtime and you still have to win the game to get two points and not go out it with losing one point. And I think if we can maximize on those opportunities, then we'll give ourselves a, a really good chance of hopefully been in a in a good spot, um, yeah, in April, and I think that's obviously the goal. Um, everyone is looking forward to. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, you've uh, you played with uh, Evis quite a bit uh, last year toward the end of the year and in, in, in camp last year. Uh, just coming into this year, what differences do you see in him? Um, I mean, I think the I mean, I think the experience that he got at the end of last year. Um, it's kind of rolled over. Um, I think getting that confidence, uh, knowing that he, um, you know, he came up, played well, and belonged here. Um, I think you notice that, um, you know, throughout camp now, um, and then just as, I mean, his skill set. Um, he skates well. He's big. Um, makes a good first pass. So all those things that you see, um, you know, we saw at the end of last year. He's brought um, to camp this year. You. What do you like about playing with um, You know, I, I think just um, you know being familiar with them. Um, you know that uh, you know that goes a long way. And you know playing with a guy that's uh, that's physical that gets stops in the D zone. Um, um, I think that's a that's a big asset to have as a partner is um, knowing that you know the puck's going into his corner. It's going to stop there and. Um, and then you get yourself in position to, you know, whether it's to, to help make a breakout pass or to be able to join the rush and add that second wave. Um, so I think that's that's a big uh, big part of it. Hey Jeff, how valuable is that? Just the chemistry part of it, or just knowing what the other guy is going to be doing. I mean, does that take some time too, or what? Uh, I mean, I think building chemistry, um, you know, it, it does it does take some time, and you know, playing with one guy might. You know that it might happen sooner than than another guy. Um, so I think that that definitely um, you know plays into things. And 
Um, I think communication's big, especially when you're, you know, whether you're playing with a new new partner, you know, going back to somebody that you've played with before because, you know, they do things, you know, slightly different than the guy you were playing with before. So um, I think communication uh, on and off the ice, um, you know, the way you see it on the, you know, things on the bench when you come back and um, just make sure that you, that you guys are going going out on the ice on the same page. As someone who's spent a lot of time on the power play throughout your career, do you feel as though there's sort of a familiar pattern to what it looks like for that unit to develop chemistry in the preseason, or does that kind of play out differently for each group? As as far as? As like the process of developing chemistry throughout the preseason or training camps? Um, well, I mean, I think you look at, I mean, the, obviously the units have, have changed from, from game to game, but, um, you know, I think those guys, uh, you know, you look at, you know, Kaner, Larks, Cat, um, you know, Ray, those guys have spent a good chunk of time together last year. So I think, you know, your the games that, that I've seen, um, you know, you see the way they're they're moving the puck, the the way that they know where where the other other guys on the ice are, I think um, you know, it helps helps each guy, you know, get that read on, you know, if, Half wall guys low. You're moving high. It's it's all the you know all those reads that you that you have to make that take time. I think you know with them being familiar with each other. I think that just kind of happens quicker. So many guys have talked about having a defensive mindset to start the season for this team to get to where it wants to go. What do elements of that mindset look like? Um, well, I mean, I think we have to be you know we have to make sure that we're playing a strong defensive game. Um, I think you know. The less time we we spend in our own end, I think um, you know obviously that's the recipe for su success. And um, you know for for us as D-men is is to make sure I touched on it earlier is to make sure we get stops, uh, make sure we have that second man in quick. And you know you do those things, um, it helps. You know you break the puck out, and then you know once you're breaking the puck out clean, um, you know our skill, our our ability to. Um, you know, get up in the rush and, and make plays, that, that kind of happens um, from there. Jeff, is there any like, adju adjustment in that for you as, you know, so much of your career you're a high point producing kind of power play guy, like has there been an adjustment shift in your game to kind of embrace that more defensive style? Um, I mean, over the last couple of years, um, you know, it's it's been a, a focus as to, um, you know, not, not, not cheat, but not lean to the offensive side, make sure that um, you know, you can be relied on and responsible in your own end and, um, you know, kind of pick and choose when, when the right time is to, to jump and, and to create that second wave. And, you know, I think they're, you know, they're encouraging us, um, you know, all, all the demon, when the opportunities there, make, uh, make a read and, and, and get up on the play. It, uh, you know, it not only helps the offense, um, but I think it helps with your defensive game getting up uh, quickly. You're putting yourself in a better position um, to have a, a tighter gap on the way back. We set several guys last year went through a playoff chase uh, for the first time in their careers. I mean, how beneficial will that be coming into this year, having played those uh, pressure games down the stretch? Yeah, I mean, I think it's huge. Obviously, at the end of last year, everyone was disappointed that uh, you know we didn't get in, but. Um, you know, for for a lot of guys in that room, that was the first um, first time that you know you're playing meaningful games right up until the end of the, end of the season. So um, you know, not we weren't in the playoffs, obviously, but you know that last month of the season was you know we were treating it like playoffs. Um, every game had uh, had high stakes. So I think that experience, um, you know, knowing what it takes to um, you know, really bear down and, and make every play matter. I think that uh, is what a lot of guys, you know, kind of learned from last year. And I think we're, we're looking to, um, you know, make sure that we start off the season and with that same mindset. Have you seen any of that yet? I mean, I know it's, you haven't played a real game yet, but like, have you seen any of the kind of the, the carryover effect of that experience show up at all? Um, no, I mean, I think uh, just looking back, I've only, obviously this is my second year here, but I look back at um, just the way the structure of camp has been. Um, you know, it's been more intense. We've been you know, <coughs> focusing on, um, you know, making sure that we're, we're doing things correctly in practice. We're, um, I, you know, I think the, the drills that we've done are, are not just, you know, kind of 
one and done type things or letting letting things play out. Um, you know, making sure that guys are competing, guys are battling, because you know I think ultimately that's a big factor um, in those those games that we went through down the stretch is not to quit on a play to you know give everything you have and and then ultimately when you when you are in the playoffs that's that's what it takes. So I think um, you know coming into camp, um, kind of treating the drills and everything like that, um, you know the way it needs to be done. I was thinking about this the other day. It's like your Montreal run. I don't think a ton of people expected you guys to go. I mean, when you see what the Tigers are doing, I mean, does the confidence just kind of build after each round or something like that? Or yeah, I mean, it does. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's. <clears throat> I mean, for my my cases, you know, we took a one nothing lead on, on Toronto, and and then they came and won three, and everyone had us. You know, kind of written off, and you kind of use that as motivation. Then you win one, and you're going back home, and it's like, okay, I'd like we win one here, we put them in a in a tough spot. So it's, I think you kind of use that as motivation, and you know, you know, speaking on the Tigers, but like what they were doing the last month of the year is is that they they had to give everything they had, and um, you know, they hit the playoffs feeling good about themselves and at the top of their game. I was talking earlier about how everyone here kind of knows their role and another thing that probably relates to the Tigers a little bit. Like, how, What does that do for a team when you have kind of guys who have clear roles and they can just kind of execute that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, like you said, it's, uh, you know, knowing what's expected of you, um, you know, what they're looking for. Um, from you, it's uh, you know it's pretty clear cut, um, you know what what they expect from you, and then you get to just you know focus focus on that. Not that you're not gonna you know add more um, in different situations, but knowing what you know each guy's expectations are, um, you know I think that you know that helps kind of settle everything, um, you know, with our team structure, and then personally as your as your own game is to. Um, you know, knowing what's expected from you and really focusing on that. Your dad's not with them right now, right? Because they're not broadcasting. No, no. So I don't, I don't even know if he's going to do anything when they, when they come back home, but we'll find out. He's got to be loving it, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of guys in that room that are, <laughs> are loving it. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Thanks.